What are some things you learned from this workshop that's going to help revamp your training? Um, to do what Eric says. <laughs> Very nice. Beautiful job. Okay, take this dog around, please. I'm backing from this. Yep. Yep. Very nice. Very nice. Longer steps. Forward, walk backwards, and stand. That was drop dead gorgeous. Okay. Uh, I've been working with them for about six months. When I first started, it was really. Um, Kind of hard to not, it wasn't that I want to believe it, but everyone in the world, everyone in the ring, all my friends are telling me to do a certain way. And so it was hard to step out of that box. But this week, spending seven days and seeing the results of six months compared to some new people or who are newer to it was just eye opening. So a lot of the things I learned were more, I think the biggest thing is how much what I do impacts her. So there was a moment where I was stacking her and I finally like thought I was doing everything right. And then you came over and said, hey, your feet are like this and it was only an inch and I went like that and then her foot moved. So realizing that the first thing I need to think about when I'm training is when she's not doing something, what am I, what am I doing? I think that was a big aha because it kept happening. So we'd watch video and there's this video where we would look like a circle where I was hunched over and she mirrored it with her body. Mm -hmm. And then there was, then he was telling me how to do my strides. So I was just kind of playing around. I go like this long and she literally imitated each one and I went, oh my gosh. Um, another thing is just as far as leadership, continuing that path, the aha of like leaving her alone, not fidgeting with her all the time and le giving her more lead, just having that leadership, a lot of the other problems go away because I've spent six months freaking out because her feet position are off and her tail's never up. And to this conference was the first time stacking that her tail was up on its own and wagging and that she's positioning her feet correctly most of the time. And, it, and I realized that it has more to do with all the other things Eric's been telling me, not focus on the problem, focus on the solution. So by focusing on all these other things, leadership, my body posture, everything but her foot, now all of a sudden her tail's up and I didn't have, I didn't do it. I didn't sit there and go tail, tail for 20 minutes every day, tail. I focused on the, the solutions and now she's just stacking beautifully and it's been really fun to see. I mean, years, like when I first started showing two years ago, I couldn't even pry her tail up. She'd buck her butt under and tuck her butt and sit down like I couldn't even with all my might. <laughs> and then uh, Eric had me starting doing a long one, and this is actually probably not long enough, um, but doing a super long one. So then I started trying to do this fancy thing like this. And where did you see that? In the ring. <laughs> <laughs> actually, I think I saw it at Westminster. I was watching Westminster video, so I was like, look at me. And then it would get tangled and all sorts of things would happen. And then if you, if you have to go, right? Because it's going to be a go around. You have to take this off and then I'm always tangled. Right now it looks better than it ever does in the ring. And then you're wrapping up and then you're going. It's just a huge thing instead of just dumping it. Because if I'm doing everything right with her, they're looking at the judge. She's looking, they should be looking at her, not me anyway. Girl. That looks beautiful. Girl. And for her to even stand like this. Oh, potato baby, tail. Pop, 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 pop. Come on, tail. Good girl. Good okay. Girl. Don't worry about that. Don't worry. I'm trying to get the tail. Yeah, but we can't focus on it. See, I Be looked at her and her ears just went flat. Yep, and tail too. And so if you focus on a problem, you will not fix that problem. You need to focus on the solution. So in this particular case, what is making her tail drop down, do you think? Lack of confidence. So she's not there yet. You're not there yet. But if you, if you see the tail and it's down and you focus on, oh, let's get the tail up and you try to get excited and stuff like that, that's not gonna fix the problem. What you need to do is get it to the point where you're so confident and you're so excited and you're so happy that she has no question in her mind that you are gonna lead her through this. And you are 100% the leader of this team right here. Now, that's gonna get her tail up. And that's not going to happen overnight. Yeah. It's going to take some time. Well, and it's situational because, like, in there she was wagging her tail, but the camera wasn't on. Right. And right. I was, like, I was more confident. And then the camera comes on, which is great because in the ring, people and judges are worse than the camera. Twice. When you get to the garden, you're going to have 
robotic cameras and everything else so so it's like people want to win but they don't think about what's going to happen like if you're in a big show and it's on tv you're going to have cameramen you're going to have cameras you're going to have all these these things and your dog and you have to be prepared for that so that tail is such a tiny tiny fraction of an issue in training this dog the main goal in training this dog is getting your confidence your leadership your rapport with her earning that respect and trust and all that stuff will go away but if you focus on a problem then that's taken away from what your goal is yeah. and now it's going to continue to be a problem because she's going to learn just like in the beginning when you didn't understand all this stuff that if she shakes and she cowers and she sits it's going to frustrate you and that's a test and if and how you react to that is going to depend on if she's going to give you everything and say you're my leader now now if she tucks that tail between her leg that's a test and if you focus on that tail you just failed that test so. A lot. But I have to say that when, see, now I'm listening to Eric. The mm -hmm. first, when I first started, I wouldn't have believed anything he just said. <laughs> no offense. Not, not all of them. I understand. I understand. I would have been skeptical. But when, we, when I first started working with her, our whole lesson, when did you say her tail was tucked the whole time? And whenever I practiced with her, her tail was tucked, it was torture. And now, whenever we practice and no one's here, I have music going, her tail's wagging. So it's improving, and I believe him because I've seen some growth and it makes a difference and now I just have to push myself and follow the plan to keep working on it but I wouldn't believe that well her her success is a direct proportion of your new confidence and abilities yeah. so are you a hundred percent yet no. no so you can't expect her to be a hundred percent you know then that's the biggest thing about people with dogs is they're like well I need my dog to look like that dog that won best in show at the garden and that handler that did that. What they don't see is the months and months and thousands of hours that it took to get to that point right there. And you know, you, you see everybody else in the ring and you try to duplicate this and duplicate that and that doesn't work right off the bat. So what we have to do is earn the respect, earn the trust. Your next show dog is going to be even easier because you're going to be at a whole new level. But as you get to that point where you are the ultimate person that really understands what's going on and know how to communicate with your dog, then you won't have these problems for that length of time anymore. That makes sense. Yeah. You just got to make sure that you don't expect 100% from her when you're not 100% as a trainer. I set up FitPaws in my house, um, in my garage and things, but I haven't set them up with the ring in mind. What does this mean to you as far as like when you go out and practice stuff that you would do in the ring? Mm -hmm. um, how does this room work for you in relation to that? Well, we're working on the same things like we're trying to do head straight in here more so that she actually likes it um, and it's fun. And all I work on in this room or right now, and you can tell me change it, is just mm -hmm. I want her happy and like her tail wagging and having fun. And, um, Good girl. And all we work on is just stretching and doing different things in here. Okay. And when I'm too lazy to pull my car out of the garage. <laughs> this, is our, this is your So let me tell you what a room like this would mean to me. If I had a dog like this and this dog was not happy in the ring, uh, whether it was real or she's just acting, um, that out there represents stress, pressure, and um, judgment, and you know, you, you've got uh, competition and stuff like that. So we have a tendency as, as the people showing the dogs to get tense ourselves, and then they pick up on that. So if we practice out there and we're in that tense situation, then we're doing nothing but projecting that onto the dogs yeah. and so it makes it it takes longer for them to get better when we're doing that in real world applications so having a room like this you can actually practice the same things that you do in out there in the ring in here but for you it's a different atmosphere 
not just for the dog, but for you. So in here, this represents happy, this represents fun, this represents play, and that allows you to morph your brain and carry that over into the ring. Because a lot of times when we're in that ring, then, you know, we do what we're normally used to, and that's we walk in and it's pressure, tension, competition, peer pressure, people talking about you, stuff like that. And it doesn't create a fun environment to work with dogs. So if we can kind of sneak in the training in a fun room like this, that's totally opposite of what you have out there, and then try to transfer it mentally ourselves out to that ring, then the dogs will be happier, it doesn't represent pressure anymore, it doesn't represent competition, stress, any of those things. So it's nice to have an, an area where you can practice what you're actually gonna do in the ring, but not with the same type of frame of mind that we have, because for us that represents judgment right. out there. So, okay, so I want this ring to be totally, or this area to be totally fun, free, you're gonna practice stuff. You're always smiling when you're working with the dog in here. And then we're gonna to try to figure out a way to transfer those emotions and that energy when we go out into that ring. Okay, so let's show, show me what you're doing with her in here. All right, so come. Would that help remind you of stuff? Yes. Okay. Touch. Good girl, yes. Now tell me why you're having her touch the pad. Back. Uh, well, it started out as stability, but I think I'm also gonna use that cue in the ring, back, back. And also tells her we work on our weight, but this is not the best one to wait on her weight because now she's sitting. Stand, and she's a little tall for her. Good, stand, good, uh -uh. stand. Now, one of the main things for a pad like that for me, what that does is that allows me to put myself into a leadership position. Okay. So if a dog is um, trying to be the leader and or testing you or making you prove yourself worthy, then when you do these exercises, you're the leader and you're making them do these things. So in their mind, that puts you into that leadership position. Now, the only time that this can backfire on you is that if you get a little lazy and all of a sudden the dog does it on their own without you giving a command, right. then the dog regains that leadership and takes it away from you. Like right now she won't put her back. She wants to move her feet around. Right, if she yeah. wants to do it her own way, Stay. there, you made Good that. Good girl. You created that. So that puts you in that leadership position. So stuff like this is good to do before you go into the ring because I can even see right now her willingness to want to work for you and her happiness girl, right there. Good okay, show me the next Do you think it would be weird if I brought a couple of small no, pads? No, not at ring? all. Not at all. That'd be great. And work like around. Yeah. I mean, just, people will start anyway. Who cares what people think as long as you beat them? <laughs> Ready? Okay, so your next Touch. thing. Stand. Very nice. Good girl. Good girl. Very nice. Do I want to be moving her back feet when they're forward like that? Not necessarily. A little bit at a time. I mean, don't expect perfection. You know, just just right now we're still working on consistency and leadership. So. Good girl, head straight. Good girl. Yes, yes, yes. Good girl. Nice. So it's hard. The first round through, I won't get her tail wagon, but maybe. That's the fine. Yeah, because right now, remember, you're still kind of showing her you're the leader and she's fighting that. It's she's been like, conditioning, which is great, but I'm, I'm going to go back and say, how can I set this up like we did to prepare for entering the ring and make it fun instead of brings in my side yards, instead of brings other places, take her other places and just keep practicing and do one step at a time and then keep bringing it together. I think when I first started with Eric, I coddled my dogs. I'm codependent on them. I'll clean, like They sleep in the bed with me. They're my, my family, my everything. And I was really worried when I first started working with him that I was going to lose some of that because a lot of things he's saying are never let them put their paws on you. I mean, I spent weeks just on that because everywhere we go. And I was like, even on the couch? Yes, even on the couch, never let them put your paws. And now we have, it's weird. It's hard to describe. I feel like before I was loving on them, but I didn't really know them. And now I feel 
there's this respect and love between all three of my dogs, but I know them. I know what they want and they still cuddle on the couch. We still have a close relationship, but they cuddle with their paws tucked and they don't. And before I had a lot of, um, like my rescue would never come in the living room and I couldn't figure it out. Well, I didn't have leadership. So all the dogs would jump on the couch. And so no, when I start making every dog gets up with permission, all of a sudden everyone's on the couch, everyone's relaxed, nobody's fighting, no one's growling. And so I think for me, that was one of the biggest steps was I was worried I was going to lose a connection, but I have, and he told me, you're going to have a stronger connection than you ever have, but I didn't believe it. And now every day, like, especially after being doing this for a week, I don't feel scared. She's going to bark and do something crazy. I feel like, okay, if she does it, cause she's still testing me, I'm going to head straighter. I have a plan and I feel closer to her than I ever have. So and what have, what have you learned after we got together that would have made you do things differently um, had we met before you got into the ring? Well, I probably wouldn't have been showing. Um, and when we first started, Eric said to take a break. And I didn't because at that point, I really had a good social group at the Wimes. We go out to breakfast. I love, they're like a family, my Wime friends. Um, they get me. We talk dog stuff. So I didn't, I wanted to keep doing it. And so I did a couple more shows and then I got really discouraged and started doubting Eric because, and doubting my dog, doubting Stella because we weren't having success. So I think if I had just started from the beginning and I'm actually a tough cookie. So I don't know if I had met you before, if I would have been open to everything, I might've still tried to go it alone um, and do my own thing. I kind of have to make mistakes, just uh, mistakes and just the older I get, the more expensive <laughs> they get. And I just make mistakes. And then when, my, when I finally took a break is when things started turning around and it all starts coming together where I'm really looking forward to shows. And um, last show, I was super excited about it. I got to see my friends. No one bugged me because I was actually looking good in the ring. And we just had fun. What changed? Um, well, first of all, we had a lot more confidence because we, we knew going into the last show that I wasn't still ready. But we did it anyway, and um, we had more confidence, and the whole point was me having fun. And people have told me forever to have fun, and I didn't know what that meant. I'd go in, like, I'd be like, okay, I'm going to have fun, I'm going to have fun, and then I'd enter the ring, and I would go, I want to throw up, this is horrible, things aren't going the way, Stella, look at me, this is horrible. And if I ever saw videos of myself, my face was like, the whole time. So, um... But this last show, we went in knowing I don't have to hand stack, which was so exciting. And when we got in, we just had fun. And I was laughing and talking with people. And when the judge looked over, she saw Stella jumping on me because I was having her touch my hand, which makes her jump on me. And um, I saw the judge smile. And we just had a good time. And it was the first time where we had time before the event, during the event, and after. And I got to spend hours with my dog with dog people, with my phone off, just doing what I enjoy. What changed? What what was it about that that last show there that made you finally say, I'm not going to try to win. That's not important. It's only important to go in and, and, and understand what having fun truly meant. What changed there? I think when I finally gave it a go and really listened to Eric and said, it's okay that everyone's doing something different. And I built confidence and started believing in myself and believing in Stella. And I still feel like we're like 20%. I feel like there's a whole more out there um, that we can do. But it was when I stopped listening to everyone else and stopped looking at what everyone else was doing. And in fact, it was the first time where I was looking at everyone so little. The only person I was looking at before the show was the judge because this judge was having them do different things. She was having them, um, instead of doing the down and back and a go around, she had them just stack right away. So stuff like that usually throws me off. So I was watching everything so I would look like I know what I was doing. But I did not even look how many handlers were there. Because usually what happens is I'll get my confidence up. And that's the other thing too is the handler situation. I get my confidence up. And the second I get there, I look at, oh my gosh, those are all professional handlers. No one is owner or handler. And I just panic right there and I just give up. It's like I say, okay, well, we're not gonna win this one. But this time I didn't even look. I didn't even look until the next day and only because I was curious of who won. And, but again, I didn't care. People kept coming up and saying, oh, you, cause the first day I got second, which was just a bonus, we weren't trying. And the, um, 
I wasn't expecting to win. And Eric actually said she's a second reserve at best right now with how she's performing. And then people kept coming up and saying, oh, it's because that handler owns blah, 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 which put on this event. And I just, for the first time ever, I didn't care. I, I, I don't care. I don't care that they're professional handlers. I think that they're wonderful and they are amazing at what they do. But I am I believe now that I can be amazing at this because one, I have sell all the time. So I get to practice with her way more than anyone else does. And um, two, I have Eric. <laughs> that should be number one. I've got Eric coaching me. But I just feel now like I really believe him that it doesn't matter if you're a handler. Because everyone's told me that, oh, but I've seen, first of all, several people in my group have won or have gotten their grand championships owner handlers. So it can be done. I think it just took them a really long time. I don't really want to spend as much time. I think we can do it faster. People psych themselves out. You know, handlers, a, a good handler will spend the time with a dog and work with that dog and become a team and go out there and and be very difficult to beat especially if it's a very good specimen of that breed but in no way shape or form does that mean that that person is unbeatable everybody in this world can be beat by by somebody else i mean what but for the owner handler you know you're taking somebody who's practicing every single day, just like a professional athlete, a basketball player, a football player, a baseball player. This is their job. This is what they do every day. And some people will take a dog out of a crate, never work with it, never build any confidence, never do anything to get the dog to perform in a way where it makes the judge's job easier to identify the parts that they need to see in order to judge that dog. And that's what a handler does. And then when they get overlooked or they get beat by the person who presented that dog so the judge can actually see what they need to do to do their job, then they start making up excuses like, this person owns this dog, this person went to dinner with that one, you know, and, and things like that. Well, being from both sides of that perspective there, when I, I judged Brittany's one year and I, there was only a, a handful of dogs that I was able to see the things that I needed to see to award those dogs. And the other ones were like tucking under, shaking their butts. They were doing, you know, all the typical things. But this one person came in and had her dog so perfect and was so easy to exam. There was no other direction for me to go. Okay, so as a note, are, are textures a factor? Okay, so are you sure you want that texture like that? You want it like that? To start with? You're stopping them in the process of entering the ring. Yeah, is that what we, I don't think we want that. Either. I thought we wanted to do it out here. Right. Okay, oh, get some attention here, and then you trot on into the ring. Then it'd be fine to make a goal to go pat, but I don't think I'd do it what right we, at the entrance. We put one at the put, corner so that she's have to, so, to so yeah, so like we're going here. And it then reminds you reestablish, us to, yes, reestablish. Then you reestablish. Ooh, I like that. And then All right. Do you want corner. do you want the stubbies up or down? I think you should do. Should one of each. Okay. All right. Just asking. Yep. Since I'm a toter. Okay. You're going really want it. Just a little bit. We want it in though, so that the person, so that the. There you go. Come in to stop. And then. All right. Okay. Let's see. Is that what y'all want? I mean, here, <laughs> we establish communication. You still need to have this kind of... Here. Here. So, so you're supposed to look your best, right? I yeah. grabbed these combs thinking it would be, maybe okay, we could weave the through them once or twice there. to yeah. get them focused on our hands yeah. and stuff. I don't know if that's... I like that idea. Yeah, what about yep. yep. So I like a double cone like before you came in, but we're kind of on space. But just something to get them focused on. We can take these out. We can take these out. Is this what you're talking about? She's talking about before you get in. Yeah, like in a line, so you can just weave them through so they're looking at your hands yeah, on which way. Okay. Guys, look. Yeah. So that instead of having this one here, look, you come and you, you get the focus here. 
then you come and you stop and focus here. If you come here, you're going to break the flow. Whereas if you just what are we come focusing on right hands, on, hands, they keep talking hands, hands. hands. Thank you. Right. Yeah, this is going to break. Because this is going to break the gate coming in. I agree. Well, so you know, that's that's here. Here. Hey, can <laughs> I make a comment? <laughs> yes, that's that's on the da that's on an uphill, and we're going downhill here. And I don't know about you, but my dog's going to start racing. Well, that's up to you to control that speed. Because well, the <laughs> in rings, you're going to have uphills and downhills. Cone, so put another cone there. Yeah, because then, yeah, then you cone. have to slow down and think about the cones. Yep. What I thought was just you could yep. get them focused I agree. I agree. I think that's right. Yep. No, 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 yep. No, I'm just asking. No, I'm good. <laughs> yep. You had it in your palm. Okay, I'm, I'm, that's too tight for <laughs> most dogs. <laughs> That's still too tight. So you're wanting to actually no, Oh, yeah. I see what you mean. Right. I yeah. thought you meant. However you want to no. Better? Yep. That, that first two are like perfect. And then these get squished. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Really, we only have room for three. Yeah. 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 I agree. Take that other one out. Yeah. Yep. That's good. That's great. Coming off here. Okay. Let me make a suggestion. Yes. Just like the agility people. Walk your course. Right. Okay, so Get up there. <laughs> come in here. Touch. Touch. Refocus. Make sure I have it there. And then come this way. I'm headed toward that. This I don't is think they'll stop. Okay. Yeah, you go around this way and then. Can I make a suggestion? Yeah. I would do a head straight on that peanut. On the peanut, and then head straight. Yeah, I think that's what we're mm -hmm. I think that was yeah. the plan. Mm -hmm. Touch and stop, and then. Weave. Oh, we're going to weave? Yeah. yeah. yeah that's yeah. Okay. So no, no, your palm's incorrect. Oh, this way. Yep. And then this way. Yep. And then this way. Yep. And then coming around here. You're awesome. I'm going to give a jiggle and then out. So are they going to touch are that? Gonna are touch they going to touch? Yeah. yeah, I would. So touch. Then okay. And touch. Are you going to have your fan down? And then. Palm forward. Palm forward. And stack. And then stack here? Mm-hmm. Okay, they need to come over this way a little because I don't have room to get. Right. Okay. Are those too close for some of the bigger dogs? Like the Weimaraner? It looks like that. No. If I had a wine, the little dog might fall. The little dog might. Yeah. Yeah, because they'll be fine. Okay, walk your course, guys. And then literally, we don't even take a breath. We just come right. You come as soon as you get that dog off of there. Then it's same energy right into this ring. How do this? you feel in this? Because right now, all my goal is let's just have fun. Mm -hmm. So if I have out my cat toy, can I have it in there in my hand? Or do no, I because I want them to focus on your hand, not the cat toy. Okay. Because that's part of this. Here, yes. And get him jazzed up. Right. And then go to just my hand. Right. <laughs> same energy, same energy. Let's go, let's go. There we go. Same energy. They stack here? You're way too serious in the fun ring. Yeah, they stack there. Okay. Well, I'll, I have to run it a couple times. <laughs> and then I can have fun. Yep. Good, good. You're not smiling. <laughs> okay, same energy, same energy. You're too serious, Emily. There you go. Okay, guys, go get your dogs. Let's see. Let, let's see what your little plan created.
Beautiful. 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 Okay, same energy into this ring. Go wide, guys. Go wide. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. That was fantastic. Woohoo! Look at that. That was amazing. All the way down there. No, 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 no. And I you didn't really get her back until all the way yeah, down. Yeah, but you did get her back and she's happy and she was focusing on you. That's fantastic. Okay, go ahead and put her up unless you want to work her over here. Okay, guys, swing wide so we have room here. Nice head straight. Beautiful. Very nice. Very nice. Beautiful. Okay, same energy. Smile. Good girl. Good girl. This way, this way. Good girl. Good girl. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes. Good girl. Good job. Put her away. Gorgeous. Yes, yes, yes.